All right, who we got? Trangus? Take it over Trangus to time. Trangus time. Hey. Clock it in. It's Trangus time. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Everybody. I, uh, I wanted to switch it up because I know I've been making you guys a little uncomfortable with like, <laughs> like history and biology stuff. You mentioned you didn't history? like History? Yeah. You think we don't like history? I think it's because you mix the history with science. Oh, okay. Well, it's all going to be anti-science. It's all, it's all going to be like this. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Give us a Bible story. Yeah, we're going about feelings. <laughs> Today we're going to learn about a man named Noah. <laughs> Bible story. Yes. Yay. Uh, no, I, I I was going to go sci-fi with it. I was going to go a little Ooh. science fiction. Oh. Yeah, because I noticed with all the... Um, all the, the news about the U.S. military shooting down the Chinese balloons, yeah, which the US Philip is. Kopzinski actually had a, a really funny uh, observation on that. Was he said, you know, it's funny they keep calling him that because technically, like, all balloons are Chinese balloons. Yeah. <laughs> that's where balloons uh, that's are made. A good one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's too bad that's going to be out of the news cycle in like a week because that's right. a funny joke. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there was some like undi uh, UFO stuff or whatever. Yeah, we and... just kind of glanced over. <laughs> 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 and, and that the... sounds right. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Haven't done the research on that, but mm. just because this is on tape and I have a chance to say this, so I maybe I look smart in the future. What I think it was is I saw they upgraded the like radar, and I think that's why they noticed the Chinese balloons. Mm. And then I also think one of the two UFOs they shot down, some people came forward and were like, "We think that was our like." little amateur project we had set this whole thing up to like measure weather just for fun oh. and they shot that down so Ooh. i think maybe it's shooting down the doppler radar yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, just, it just does kind of seem like i don't know if that's true or not and like who knows because it's like it's tough to tell with that kind of stuff there's so many layers of like uh spinning like spin to it yeah. but i, I kind of think like when it all shakes out it's just going to be like Oh no! What you know? I'm gonna do an information Freedom of Information Act request to see what happened. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be redacted, but maybe it's just gonna be like we oversensitized the radar and yeah. freaked out a couple times. But um, all right, put it on the record. Right. Yeah, yeah. On the record. Mm -hmm. So what I want to talk about is something that's called the Fermi paradox. Have you guys ever heard of that? I mm -hmm. I believe I have. Right. It's yeah. like there's a bunch of YouTube videos that are really popular that kind of explain it because it's like a very common like stoner like whoa kind of like hmm. you know thought. Uh, can, I, uh, can I make my recollective guess at it? Actually it yeah it, but before you do uh, let's 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 the three of you guess what uh, you think well, it is uh -huh. and oh, then no. I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's what makes it fun. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it's having fun? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so guess something that stoners would muse about on the oh, uh, shit. something s I told about you, space. I told you sci-fi. I told you sci UFO. I told you paradox. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll tell you what it is, and then I'm gonna gloss over. I'm gonna explain it real quick because it's not that complicated. Yeah. And then I'm gonna tell you like what I think like the coolest theories about it are, and then maybe okay. you guys can either come up with your own theory or tell me which theory is your favorite. Okay, okay. I love okay. theories. All right. it's, it's that stuff that they show in sci-fi movies are actually true. Like okay. those things actually Paradoxically. Happen. Yeah. Sure. How's that a paradox? <laughs> I don't know, buddy. Right, yeah. I, I, I shouldn't have put that on you. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. The goal was going to answer. I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying. Like everything in a movie has already happened. And Ooh. That's why yeah. they good. know about it. We just don't. Mm -hmm. It's all true. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So writing's not real. Exactly. The paradox is no such thing as writers. No one actually has an imagination. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> made me do this. Yeah. I was down to learn. I offered to make one guess to make everybody else do it. Public school, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> I'm come public school too. Come work it out on the board real quick. <laughs> I almost did bring. <laughs> I almost did like a whole Dimitri Diagram. Martin thing for you guys. Yay. Uh, one day. Yeah. yeah, one day. <laughs> live show. Blunt people live show. Show and tell. It's funny because I think uh, all four of us have a different idea of what this show is. And for me, it very much is forcing you guys to listen to my bullshit <laughs> and making you do things and pimping you out. You do make us, <laughs> <laughs> you do, make us do things. I yes. do. Yeah. <laughs> but I love you. Uh, <laughs> it's nice to have chores for friends. <laughs> Friendship chores. Wait, do I get to make my guess? Yeah. Okay, I think I, because I think I kind of maybe know what it is. Okay. Is it that, like, we are like we must either be alone as intelligent life in space or we they already came and found us and were like 
nah. Pretty much ding, ding, ding. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, Aaron got it. So we'll it. never meet him because they've either already been here or we're alone. They already done well, that's, So, so the, uh, just the, the, the paradox, because there's the paradox and then it like branches off to a million different like things. Okay. So uh, the paradox, it's named after this dude, Enrico Fermi, which was like, uh, he was a nuclear physicist, I think, and in like 1950, he was in New Mexico with their like nuclear. I actually wrote it down. I was gonna say you're doing this off the to off the dome, Travis. I know, right? With dates. Um, <laughs> no, 1950 at Los Alamos National Laboratory, New Mexico. Okay. There's like a group of nuclear physicists all together having lunch, and I guess there was a um, a comic in the paper that day, and it was just like aliens stealing trash cans from New York City or something like that. Just a silly cartoon. Yeah. But it got him talking about it, and then this guy. Um, famously said some version of like, if they exist, like where are they? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, once you actually like look at the the math of like how large like physically the universe is, and you start actually going based on like <clears throat> like what we know right now, and the best estimates by scientists, it does kind of get confusing because it's like there's so much. There's so many different stars. There's 200 to 400 billion stars just in the Milky Way, which is our local galaxy. Mm -hmm. And seven, 70 sextillion in the observable universe. Know, yeah, so that's just like... A lot. Ba basically, <laughs> like, you, you can think of it as infinity almost. It's okay. like such a huge, crazy number. And so they're, they're running it, and even if like a very small percentage of those stars can actually have like a habitable planet for life, um, <clears throat> given how much space there is it doesn't make sense that like if there was an, an, an intelligent life in the universe why we haven't seen any signs of it okay. right um so yeah to bring it back to my well my theory like, <laughs> uh, this, uh, writing, writing doesn't this, exist this sounds like men in black <laughs> oh, is what I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, yeah it's a very men in black situation mm -hmm. so. right right yeah. uh so yeah they, they, they figured if in, interstellar travel is possible even the slow kind so mm -hmm. like the slow, by the slow kind, I mean, like, if you travel at the speed of light, that's, like, as fast as we think we can go. Like but even that is, like, that's, like... It's going to take a while to get... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, but even if they only... Even if they had that, you could technically colonize the, our galaxy in, they said, 5 million to 50 million years, which is pretty wide range, and you're going to mm -hmm. see a lot of that in this, like... Because they're like, we don't really know. It's just a fun thing to think yeah. about. So if you were... Tra if they... If this... If some intelligent life could travel at light speed they could do this in five to f 50 million years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the stars are much older than our sun, and the universe is estimated to be 13.8 billion years old. So it is kind of crazy. It's like, oh, well, like, I wonder why that hasn't happened or that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just seems like at some point it would have. And so um, then we have something called... Uh, the Drake equation, which is a guy Frank Drake, mm. like, started thinking about this, and he made this whole equation of, like, um, uh, it, it's a complicated equation, but it basically is the equation to see how likely it is that we would find um, life, intelligent life in the universe. And so people were running different numbers through, because no one has, like, real numbers, but um, mm -hmm. there's this uh, group called the Search for um, extraterrestrial intelligence. And like Carl Sagan was in it. It was like really big in the 60s. And they got together and estimated a thousand to a hundred thousand, or a thousand to a hundred million in the Milky Way galaxy alone chances of finding like intelligent life. Um, and then. One in a thousand? No, a no, thousand yeah. to 100 million different planets they thought could have okay. habitable oh, life. life. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there was also these uh, guys who came up with what they call the Hart Tipler conjecture, which they said if there ever was like intelligent life. So basically, if life was intelligent enough for space travel, like A, they're going to have weapons that could destroy us, and like B, um, they we would have already gotten space probes because they're like there's no cost really in terms of life or anything to send out probes. So mm. if these alien technology like if alien technology is that advanced we would already have like these probes and have like been like and we're sure that they're not living underneath mexico well uh we don't know we are not we sure yeah know. yeah i mean that is another that is another solution to the is that they're here paradox. already there's the two simplest Man, ones black. they don't exist but they're already here <laughs> we're kind of in between that space okay, all right well, it's yeah. like the simulation thing yeah. or whatever yeah, yeah that's yeah, one of the that's one of the yeah. theories actually Ooh. um 
So I'm excited to hear that one. Yeah, before I uh, let's see. Just I just I just want to cover like a couple of these things before we start getting into the theories. Okay. And I start losing it. So, um, yeah. And then uh, Tipler, uh, Frank Tipler, and John D. Barov use pessimistic numbers, so they're like, all right, we're going to be a little more That's cynical. A very negative number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were they were they were glass half full with their numbers, right. and they figured the the chance of having a civilization in a galaxy is less than one. So, oh. that kind of tells you that like, all right, no one How knows what they're really talking about. Oh, what? We don't know. We don't even know how many galaxies there are? No, but uh, within the observable universe, which is as far as we can see with our telescopes, they said they have, they think there's 70 sextillion stars. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so it's a lot. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, other nice simple... big water here. Yeah. You want some? No, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Like uh, other simple solutions, so we can just get past those. Is we haven't been around long enough to run into life. Sure. So we've been here for a pretty short amount of time. So maybe just the universe is so vast, whatever life is out there hasn't reached us. Mm -hmm. You know. Also, like maybe they, they just haven't come to our area yet, or maybe they're just kind of focused on their own areas. Um, to myself. Yeah. There's another one, basically, and, and, and some of this is in the theories, but there's a theory that intelligent life destroys itself, which I think is actually pretty poignant nowadays, mm -hmm. where it's like. It's a show. If you get to the point where you are um, a civilization that's able to like generate and create and use energy, mm -hmm. you're, um, you know, there's a good chance like we have kind of done. We're <laughs> going to generate you greenhouse can gases. Beat each and... other to death. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's the other one. Intelligent life destroys others. Is like another mm. thing where it's like if you're, uh, you know, if we went to another planet, would we respect the life that was there? Or you know what I mean? No. No. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. We wouldn't even know what it was. Probably. No, no, no. We're trying to colonize that shit. Like we would be like, this is a great chance to try out nukes in space. Handing out blankets. Here yeah. we go. Right. Right. <laughs> 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 Just walk this way. <laughs> well, famously, that's what happens in the world. The war of the worlds is all the aliens get. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Points yeah. for Chase's theory. <laughs> Chase has read Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. Or... But I know there's no writers in Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. <laughs> it, it happens. Yeah, it happens, based on what you're about to say. No, the, the aliens, like, they're just kill, kicking everyone's ass, and then they all get sick because they're not used to the pathogens on Earth. Oh. Um, so, uh, the, 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 and then another easy one is, like, alien technology is just imperceivable to us. So, yeah. if, like, you think about technology, like... The way we used to have technology versus how we have it now, and then you try to like multiply that again and just imagine what the next next step in technology would even be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you think maybe they're five. You like know, they have a literal cloud. Right. Yeah. 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 Like um, they're way ahead. We can't. Mm -hmm. even think but just like it. It, yeah. it moves and, around and it grabs all of our data and information, and now they're having a blast with that. Yeah. And there's a ton of like cool yeah. science fiction books about this stuff, but. Um, all right, so now, oh, last thing before the theories is there's this thing that they used to talk about, this type of stuff, they call um, the Kardashev scale of civilization. So there's three. It's uh, a number one on the Kardashev scale of civilization is almost where we're at, where um, a species has control over all and, and is able to, like, um, control all the energy production in its own um, planet. That's like a number one on the Kardashev scale. A number two would be if they were able to like hijack and get energy from um, like a, a star or like, like a... Like solar power? Kind of, but more intense than that. So like, like take that star and yeah, use like, it up. Like that, yeah. yeah, like a, an example that they use a lot is like, uh, if like I guess theoretically you could take a red dwarf and make like this huge, like, um, like almost like... Uh, half the size of our uh, solar system sphere around it, and they call that a, um, I don't know how to say that, matryoshka brain yeah, yeah. is what they call it. And it's like, you know, you could have like the, the first layer that's closest to the sun um, takes, it, and it takes energy from that heat, but then it gives off a lot of heat. And then the second layer generates like steam from the heat or whatever. And mm -hmm. then the third layer takes that heat and then Keeps releases going. heat and it just goes all the way out. Um, so, okay. And then the third one would be like a galactic civilization that can control and like takes energy from like the entire galaxy, uh, which is like kind of intense. But like that's just their way of thinking about these things because it's okay. also like huge. All right, theories. You got planetarium hypothesis. That was the simulation that Chase was yeah. talking about, where either we're a part of a simulation 
or our gal or our um, solar system is, you know, in a simulate simulation. So we think that it's larger than it is, but it's really just like us, and then we're being kind of controlled from the outside. So mm -hmm. that's one theory. Um, and the technology is the technology yeah. thing. Technology is so great we wouldn't notice. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. 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 We can comprehend. Show. Like yeah. men in black. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just kidding. Like men in black. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the SETI paradox. So that's the search uh, uh, for extraterrestrial intelligence. The same people as earlier. They have their own paradox, which is. You gotta get your own paradox. Dude, you gotta call it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I got two of them. Paradox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the SETI paradox is maybe. Everyone's listening and no one's responding. So basically, yeah. like, just Hello. no one, yeah, no one cares. Is it? Yeah. Hello. Like, we're, we're just not interesting enough for any of those civilizations yeah. to, like, want to actually contact us. Mm -hmm. um, there's the zoo hypothesis, which is, like, uh, that they're leaving us alone. Like, we would, like, try to preserve, like, a habitat for, like, animals. They're just mm -hmm. leaving us and trying to let us, like, naturally take our course yeah. or whatever. Um and that there's a there's another theory I really like called the Great Filter Theory, which is that it's actually way harder for life to evolve than we think it is. Mm. And that one gets into this whole like kind of like a bottleneck idea of like there's only so many planets where it's going to be the right conditions for these certain chemicals to combine and form and replicate and slowly mm -hmm. become life. Mm -hmm. And then there's just all these other filters of like and how much of that life is successful and how much of that life becomes intelligent and how much of that intelligent life doesn't cause climate yeah. dis doesn't try to destroy the world <laughs> yeah, 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 the yeah. rest of it yeah it doesn't nuke itself into non-existence a lot um, of factors yeah, yeah. <laughs> and th there's a lot of like periodic extinction ideas of like how common is it for like meteor like like how the dinosaurs got taken out like is that common like how often does that happen like we just don't know um there's also something called the Berserker Hypothesis, Ooh, which is... I know you love this one. Ooh, it's named after, uh, it's named after a science fiction uh, book series, but um, it's... It, there's also, sometimes they say Grey Goo, they, sometimes they say Berserker Hypothesis, but basically this idea is that um, if there's intelligent life, the only way for it to make sense would be if it was sending these probes. And not just the probes, but it was sending, like, replicating, rob like, a non... Um, like non-organic life like not like going at themselves but they made robots that would go and they would just like completely disassemble a planet turn it into resources and then build more robots and send them mm -hmm. out and just kind of take over the Slowly. the universe that way the i robot theory yeah <laughs> not quite but close the uh, you see a lot of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's isaac asimov but I, I, I appreciate you getting like i feel like you're you're really you're, i'm trying you're, to make it work you are I'm man trying. i'm proud of you yeah 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 um the Meyer, the Myers hypothesis yeah. Yeah. i like it paradox and then there's <laughs> Come on. there's a creepy one called the dark forest hypothesis Ooh. Ooh. Um, i like it creepy yeah it, it's a little creepy there's a there's actually a book a guy wrote a book called the dark forest um I, I think it's just called dark forest but it's been around since like 86 i think but the idea is that like the uh the universe is not like a bunch of us trying to reach out to each other the universe is more like a dark forest full of like hunters and predators who don't want to like signal to anyone else that they're there for fear of like getting, getting taken out and we're just the only one firing like just <laughs> set, like, UFOs after, like, out the sky <laughs> Is anybody out there? We like E.T. <laughs> Come on now, we won't hurt you. Yeah. We got Reese's Pieces, get down here. <laughs> um, so, uh, there's, and, and then my favorite one, I think, is the Mosh matryoshka brain that i brought up like the yeah that brain, don't make sense to me right so the the way i think about that one and this is not exactly like i just told you kind of how like the matryoshka brain thing would work but uh the hypothesis here that i wanted to get in would be that like um technology and information is moving so fast we're moving towards what they call a singularity which have you guys heard of that have it also means nothing to me right it's just very common the singularity mm -hmm. is just supposed to be some point where we become one with like technology because it's advanced so much and okay. it just kind of like consumes us and we become one so like uh, a way to think about that is um they use something called a jesus unit which mm -hmm. is that when jesus was alive they say the amount of technology we had when jesus was alive they call that one jesus unit 
and they said the amount of information we had doubled by 1500 and that was two jesus units and the amount of information we had by 1750 was four jesus then 1908 jesus 1950 16 jesus 1960 32 jesus jesus christ so that's yeah. the growth just keeps going 60 is 32 jesus Right. So every 10 wow. years. And then, no, no, no. Well, no, it, it eventually got It, it gets faster to the oh, okay. point where uh, 1973, they were like, that's 128 Jesus. And now they say it actually um, doubles twice a year. Damn. Wow. Yeah. So if you think, if you. But, I certainly feel like I cannot keep up. No. But, no, but that's the thing. Though. It's like, how could we? Yeah. We, we, we? We didn't evolve or we're not designed yeah. for this type of thing. It's just what naturally seems to happen with information. So mm -hmm. then the question is, would another um, civilization that was on the same track as us, like once they get to that peak point of like information and it's just like, the, you have to start um, basically going into like transhumanism and like changing yourself in order to deal with all the information hmm. that you're presented with. Black Mirror. Right. And then the singularity is basically also like, yeah. <laughs> we the idea is that we just find a way to like digitize ourselves and upload our consciousness to, yeah, yeah. technology, right? Like and, upload. Right. <laughs> Yeah, these ideas are out there, guys. We, <laughs> so, and then... I told you no one writes this shit. <laughs> no one writes it. Reality, no yeah. one writes it. This has been happening. <laughs> yeah. So somewhere out there, the, a berserker is watching a show and wearing it, and it's called Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Uh huh. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but but the, the I appreciate you sticking that one out and making it. I'm sure. I'm, I'm looking sure, at the notes too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the high, that hypothesis has a name, but basically the way I think about it is like maybe you get stuck at like a two on the Carter Chef scale where you have the ability to take over the energy of like a mm -hmm. small star and then digitize like everybody's minds and mm -hmm. then you just mm -hmm. like you know why would they come and see us if they had everything okay. they could possibly all the info yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, those are. Uh, what's, your, what's your your favorite? Is the is the brain theory the the the, the Matryoshka brain? I think my two favorites are. I like the great filter one. I like the idea that like, um, not that I like it. I just find it very interesting yeah. that like inherently for a civilization to get advanced to a certain point, they're going to like kill themselves off. And the reason why I like that is mm -hmm. like not something they talk a lot in like the old sci-fi, but I think is like more prescient now. Which is that, like, what's becoming clear with our um, forward progress, like, as a species is that we're really being held back by a lot of our just, like, the way our, our, our brains and our bodies, like, evolved mm -hmm. in terms of, like, just surviving. Not and then a, a lot of these things Perfect. are... Yeah. <laughs> so, so now we're, like, able to be manipulated if, if people can, like, you yeah. know, in different ways by social media and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's our like, stupid brains. Do, yeah, are yeah. we just, are we self-destructive in a way that, like, yeah. we can only get so far and then it all crumbles below us, you know? Yeah. yeah. Either that or we just, you know, you, you can't get that far without cutting your legs out from underneath you. Mm -hmm. Or I also like the, the nicer version of that is the Matryoshka brain where it's like you get to the point where you don't need like to be bodies anymore and you can just digitize yourself and like live forever in this like yeah, yeah. Well, i don't know if i'd want to do that though like, yeah just... you don't want to be in the sims N nah i'm good <laughs> like, let me just let it just in like... but yeah. i do think that might happen though yeah because i mean it's already like slowly happening mm -hmm. you know, like pacemakers mm -hmm. and little things are just like oh that's all fucked put a new like it's yeah. metal all mm -hmm. of it keep going i like uh i like the zoo and the planetarium too to some degree just to be like yeah they found us they're like watching us like we're little ants or whatever in there you don't exactly. think that's creepy of course it's creepy <laughs> i think it's creepy if yeah, you're but, human but i yeah. think and then i think that that it really doesn't disturb our situation like th those don't really imply that anything's going to get worse yeah so, that is true uh, uh that works for me all right no change. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, though. It'd be cool if they would help, like, if they see, like, somebody's I mean, up you there. Like, you they're about to I'm nuke not, each yeah. other. Break like, it up, break it up. Y'all yeah. yeah. can't be like, yo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's a very common thing that they talk about, where it's like, how likely is it that they would be, like, trying to help us out versus just trying to, like, swoop in, take all the resources and bounce. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's probably what they would, like... Most likely. If they interacted with us. Do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, the example is, like, if you went to a forest... There's a bunch of squirrels that were like really intelligent. You'd be like, yeah. "Wow, that's really cool." Well, we're gonna take all these trees though. Yeah, <laughs> like, we have to build houses and whatever. Yeah. Um, Touche. Yeah. How about you, Chase? What do you mean? 
That was my favorite. Yeah. What, what, what are you feeling? What's your theory? Oh man, I don't know. Yeah. I do like I do like Aaron's. I do. Uh, that also kind of like makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You know. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't have a favorite. It's all intro. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I have a bow I can throw on this anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I watched this documentary on Netflix called Trip to Infinity, which is really interesting if you haven't mm-hmm. seen it. It's just kind of like very mathematical. It's a bunch of mathematicians and physicists sitting down and talking about the actual idea of infinity because what they think now is that the universe isn't infinite. They think it's finite and it, you know it's huge, yeah. but it's finite and they think that it's kind so of what's like... What's beyond that? That's crazy. Yeah. They, well, it's supposed to like... Space-time is very complicated. It like turns and whatever. Yeah, there's movies. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. They, they can explain it. <laughs> exactly. But not written movies. <laughs> um, I mean, they wrote them, but it was based on true stories. So yeah. Everything. <laughs> but it's just interesting because, uh, you know, when, when you hear them talk, like, you know, they don't know for sure. They're just kind of theorizing. But there's this really interesting idea that, like, the only th- it's very possible the only thing that's infinite in the entire universe is human creativity. <gasps> Damn. Somebody's gonna put that on there as a Facebook post. Yeah, but, yeah, that's some inspiration. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, they already have my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. making the rounds. Dang, uh, that's crazy. Though. Isn't that interesting? Especially if like there, there's that other thing where it's like, uh, assuming there's other life out there is um, using something called the mediocrity principle, which is saying that we're not special. Like, or yeah, there's nothing wh- special. What are the about odds the... that we would be the most? Yeah, it's advanced. like if you take a random sample of something, it's probably gonna be out of the you know more common than the less you're not going to grab like something from like if you grab like uh you have like a bunch of marbles and most of them are red and you grab one it's probably gonna be red you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. um but then there's another one called and we're the, a grabbed marble in that scenario yes. yeah you're okay. just a regular marble yeah so that's what we start with mm-hmm. and we're like we assume most of them are like us versus the rare earth hypothesis which is just that like it's in, infinitely hard to create intelligent life and mm-hmm. we're the only ones um, and if that is the case, then truly, I th- I think there's a chance that human creativity is the most, the only thing that's infinite, which I think is a really cool little bow to put on on, on top of that, you know. Great segment, Trangus. Thank you. I like the ending. Yeah. Space Trangus. Yes, yeah, I worked hard. <laughs> Blunt people in space. <laughs> Blunt people go into space. Cha cha cha. <laughs> I'll be the robot. I'll... <laughs> Danger, Chase Myers. Danger. <laughs>